Good morning, everybody. It is 8.05 here in Florida, and I'm going to try to get a few videos out to you guys this, this morning. Um, but first, I just want to in, uh, address <clears throat> some comments, a couple of comments here, um, and let the uh, commenter know that, sweetheart, I love you. Um, you know, sometimes when we write out things, um, it is not what the spirit of what we're trying to say. It doesn't sound the same way you're trying to make it come out. I just want to let you know that. And um, I don't feel I don't feel that anything that I wrote was um, offensive. Um, you have to understand that this channel is primarily a teaching channel. Yes, I do interpret dreams, and I had to learn how because I was in such spiritual warfare. From the, you know, from, well, from the year 2000, I started going through warfare, and then it subsided for about a year and a half, and then I've been through, um, well, right around 16, right at 16 years of spiritual warfare, a little bit in this last year, but it's not as heavy as it has been, and I do mean day after day, after day, after day, after day, after month, after week, after week, after week, after month, after month, after month, after year, after year, after year. On my face. Hardly not eating. Um, hardly not sleeping because I'm um, scared to death. Went through a hundred questions. If you'd like to learn more about what I went through and how the Lord put a hook in my mouth and my stroke and me losing my son, and that has nothing to do with my warfare. Uh, just to make that clear, uh, I went through a total transformation. The intellect, uh, the faith in my intellect was totally wiped out. Not the inner man, not the spirit man. We are sealed to the day of redemption. But the intellect being not performed in this world, but be transformed into the renewing of your mind and that's what happens to us the, the mind has to follow the heart so when we confess the Lord Jesus Christ you know we are drawn by the Spirit and then we are given an allotment of faith he does it all uh, all we need is an open heart but um, I'm not going to explain any more of this because it would take too long but I went through well for well, for about almost 16 years, because well, about the first year I went through a little bit and then, and then it kind of subsided. But for about 16 years, I went through hardcore every day, like I said, every week, every month, every year, on my face, two, three, four, five times, scared to death, going through anxiety and everything else and I, I had over a hundred questions probably for our Lord and bless the Lord at all times because he always answers us you guys and it was for his will and for his purpose you know he knew exactly what he was doing when I was a very young girl well a child and um, I had an open heart to Jesus Christ and you know he knocked on it and I answered and you know, he invited me into the sheepfold, and he knows exactly what he's doing when he does that. You know, he doesn't make mistakes. You know, he he knows the beginning from the end, and he knows you, and he knew what your life. He can he's got the ability to look at the end of the book and see what's going to happen to you in your life. Depending on the choices you make, yes, we have free will, but he has that ability. So he knows exactly who we are and what kind of heart we have before he lets us come into the sheepfold. And he wants all of us to be in there so that we can have the agape love in us. But um, what I wanted to say is, is that if you would like to find out more about me, it's in my first two videos. I got over 500 videos here in the last year and month, I think somewhere in there. And uh, they're, the first 250 are probably primarily teaching videos, and that's what I do. That's what I'm commissioned to do. Um, 
and also I learned how to interpret dreams because I was going through such horrible warfare that um, the Lord Jesus Christ taught me how to interpret my dreams about our heart issues, about the things that are going on with, within us. And uh, so he would tell me about scriptures and all everything like that and um, through my dreams. And then, of course, I'd watch 15, well, anywhere from 10 to 20 um, ministry programs a day. Because every day I had new questions. Every day I had new fears. Um, and he was remaking me. Not that I had lost my salvation. Because if you have no salvation, you have no warfare. Zero. Zilch. Because we have the mind of the flesh and we have the mind of the spirit. And they are continually at war and they are contrary to one another. And so when I do dreams, when I interpret dreams, a lot of it is about your heart issues. And I have to ask questions and this and that. You know, there's a lot of eschatology going on in today's uh, situation also on YouTube. And, um, you know, I mess with that a little bit to, 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 because, you know, we're supposed to be watching and uh, looking for the rapture and... Um, so yes, I do interpret dreams, even in eschatology, but that's not what I was really commissioned to do. What I was really commissioned to do is about uh, law and grace. I can spot it a mile away. When somebody, they may have received Jesus in the right way through faith. Uh, they went up to that altar and they received him as their Savior. But then somehow, some way, their doctrines got skewed in life. And they listen to this person and that minister and this minister and that person. And, and then they fell into law. Um, as a matter of fact, I had to, you know, I'm just going to put this out there and I'm going to make it real quick. I had to work with Amanda Christian for over three months before she got revelation on the grace, on the grace of God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And it, you know, hey, it was a battle. And bless her heart, she had a stronghold of law. But look at her now. Now she understands it fully. And now she's a powerhouse for the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is that is what it's all about, you guys. Um, you know, is loving our Lord God first. And she dreamed of me before she met me. And so has quite a few other people. I can name about nine of them. Um, and there are reasons why I know it's me in the dreams. Um, there's tall tale signs. I'll just put it that way. And I'm not going to tell you just in case you do have a dream. And then if you do have a dream about me, I'll let you know if it's me or not. <laughs> but anyways, um, if you want to know about me and my warfare, my... Uh, it's called The Faith of a Child. Uh, there's two of us. This is the first two videos I ever did. If you would like to learn more about what I went through uh, with my spiritual warfare. And it wasn't, it was about everything every day. <laughs> Different things every day. It was just him teaching me and pruning me. And for such a time as this. And so that's what I wanted to say this morning is... Um, it's all about love. I love my Lord God, and I love you guys. And it is a really huge deal because there are so many doctrines that are going on right now, you guys, that are just, it's not the true gospel of grace. It's not. It's slapping Jesus in the face, saying what he did wasn't enough. You know, I've heard people say, well, if you're not, if you got one sin, you're not going in the rapture. And that is, wow, that is just so far from the truth. It, 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 it couldn't be further. Um, because we're all chocked full of sin. We couldn't give an occasion to sin at any second. Um, but anyways, I just want to let everybody know that it is a huge deal. That the doctrine of law is really strong on YouTube and uh, the problem with it is is number one it's not going to get people saved number two 
It's putting people that are saved, that maybe received Jesus in the right way through faith when they were little or whatever at some point in their lives. And they're in fear, guilt, and shame. And, the, you know, well, I hate to see people in fear. I hate to see people spreading bad doctrine because that's what it does. It puts somebody back in fear, back in guilt, back in shame, back in condemnation. And therefore now there is no condemnation. No, none, zero, zilch. For those who are in Christ Jesus. Period. It's called gospel of grace for a reason. Unmerited favor. We are a work in progress, you guys. We're none perfect from the garden. It is about the blood, for the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to atone for your sins. I'll say that again. I'm going to say it slow this time. For the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you to atone for your sins I've given it to you upon the altar to atone for your sins Jesus' blood is what atones for our sins it has nothing to do with you being perfect you know you're you're saved on the inner man the minute you confess the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior from your heart your inner spirit, your inner man, you are then an adopted son or daughter of the Most High God. I just want to make that clear. If you really believe in Jesus, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son forever shall believe it. in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Not that you, you might have everlasting life. No, you well, we'll have to see if you're going to have everlasting life. Well, let's see how, well, I'm not sure, but we'll find out if you're going to have everlasting No. You will have everlasting life. And it's not good to be condemning people um, because they have strongholds. They still have sin. They still have things that are, you know, that they're being worked on about. And, um, you know, we cannot read a man's heart. You know, we can look at the outside and see, well, there's some sin there. You know, but how are we supposed to handle that? Not with, you know, not with ugliness, not with bitterness, not with hatefulness, but with love. It's just to go to your brother in love. And in private. In love and in private. And that's the best thing you can do with somebody is give them grace. Just like the Lord Jesus has given us grace. He loved us while we were yet sinners. We're still sinners. You can send, you can give an occasion to sin at any second, any day, any time. Just with a thought. Just with a thought. So I just wanted to put this out here and let, um, let you know that I love you. That's the only reason why, because I can't stand seeing people in, in guilt and in fear. And uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of bad doctrine going around. And, you know, it, and it is causing a lot of ugliness in the body of Christ. And, it, and we're not really supposed to be having that. And sometimes when I put a comment, I try to do it in love as best as I can. Um, but sometimes I may put a couple of lines in there. Not out of hate, or not trying to be mean, but it's just trying to make you think. I just want you to think. I'll word it in a way just to try to teach and to make you think. That's all it is. Make you realize that it is about him and not about us. And that we're not none, no, not one, perfect. Because if you say that you're perfect, then you're making God out to be a liar. Now, is there some that is working, walking more in the spirit than in the flesh? Absolutely. And that's wonderful. That's great. That's, a, that's an awesome thing. But 
we have to show love and grace and mercy just like the Lord Jesus Christ did to us and does to us continually. You know, where sin abounds, grace abounds much, much more, it says in Scripture. And the problem is, is people are taking and they're not rightly providing the word. And I have a video on that if you guys want to go look at that. Um, and they're jumbling up a bunch of scriptures that don't belong together. You know, we have to look at scripture and the division of the word, um, correctly dividing it. And that means historical reference, that means cultural reference, that means um, the original language sometimes, that means grammar, that means context, that means who is it, be, who is it being spoken to? There's a whole lot to interpreting scripture. And I mean every scripture in every book. Because not every book is written to the Gentile. Okay? So if you want to go look at that, that'd be awesome. But I just wanted to clarify to whomever that uh, I love you guys. I love each and every one of you. But I love God first. And my... The thing that he has had me do today, as a matter of fact, Colleen, our sister Colleen, our beloved sister, I just love her so much. Well, it kind of blew me away because she told me that she had an audible. Tell Sherry, this is from the Lord, tell Sherry that that man is real. And I knew what it meant. She knew what it meant because it was pertaining to a dream and it was pertaining to people that were preaching law that we're still under the law, that we have to be perfect, that we have to add to, maintain um, the gospel of grace, that we are saved and sealed to the day of redemption. We were bought with a very, very heavy, heavy price, and that is our Lord Jesus' blood. I'm not going to get into the gospel message right now because it would take too long for this video, but just know that everything I tell you Anytime I word it in a certain certain way, it's out of love, and it's only out of because I'm supposed to be teaching. I'm supposed to be telling people the true gospel of grace. I try to do the very best I can. And, um, you know, we all have the flesh, every one of us, uh, and it comes out in different ways at different times. And uh, so, but just know that I love you. I really, really do. And and if I didn't, I wouldn't care. You know, I would just leave the comment there and don't even mess with it. But it's to teach, and it's because I don't like, you know, that we're, we, you know, the doctrine gets too, too skewed, skewed to the point where we're putting other people in condemnation, guilt, fear, and shame. And that's not of God. You know, it says that his yoke is light and we're supposed to be resting in him. He's got it all under control. He's the author. He started it. And he's the finisher. He's well able to finish it. He, he's the one that's going to do it. Just trust in him. And love him and love one another. That's what it's all about, you guys. So God bless you, God bless you, my dear sweet commenter, both of you, both commenters, God bless you, I, anything I say to you, I try to keep you, is strictly out of love, so that just spread the love, spread the gospel, spread the mercy, spread the grace, you know, and not, not any fear, we're not supposed to be in condemnation, we have a wonderful, loving, loving God, look what he did for us. Emmanuel, God with us. And he knew exactly what he was going to go through when he got here. I'm going to say this and then I'll close. He was beaten with a weapon called a flagrum. Now, this had leather whips on it, but at the end of the leather whips, it had glass, metal, and some people teach small hooks. He was beaten with that. His entrails were hanging out. They beat on his head the crown of thorns down. 
with sharp thorns in his head. They ripped his beard out of his face. They stabbed him in the side. They, he was so thirsty, they gave him vinegar, sour vinegar. They put six-inch thick nails. You know where your funny bone is in your arms? Yeah, it ain't too funny when you hit it, is it? That's where they put it. What he went through was horrific. He swept blood in the Garden of Gethsemane. He took all the wrath of God for you. For your sin. And all he wants you to do is to believe in him. And accept the righteousness that he imputes to you through your belief, your faith. And that he paid it all for you. That's it. God bless each and every one of you. Amen and amen.